everyone. Welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how fantastic uninvited tenants are near Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs. My name is Tyler. Uh, Landlord Tyler is my new nickname, apparently, from uh, some of our our esteemed listeners. <laughs> and joining me in the studio is Mr. Non-Landlord, Mr. Jimmy Jet, James Jim Jet. How are you, buddy? Doing good. Doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I don't own any property. That's a... Um, I don't want to say that's a good thing, but it's a, a safe thing, I could say. <laughs> it's, yeah, six one way, half a dozen the other, yeah. I guess. I did have somebody uh, call me uh, the other day and asked if your middle name uh, was... No, what did he say? He said... He asked if your middle name was actually Jet. And I said, yes, it is. He goes, no fucking way. I was like, yeah, his name's Jim Jet Black. And he goes... Wait, his name is Jet Black. I said yes. <laughs> he goes, no, it's not. I was like, next yeah. time you see him, ask to look at his uh, driver's license. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. That's like what Marlene, the plant lady, said. Yeah. You know, she's <laughs> like, if I, that's a fake name, if I've ever heard one yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, nope, my parents were hippies. Yeah. <laughs> if if there's a little Tyler running around, it's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna make up some funny name for him. Absolutely, so. <laughs> you've got to. I mean, it's, right. it's got to be the right of the parent to mess with the child in any way pi- possible. And if you can name your child something that's mm-hmm. fun like that, mm-hmm. even after you're gone, yeah, you're, you're still, still messing with them. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, duh. I always thought Richard Berry would be a good one for me. Richard Berry. Yeah. Why is that? Richard Berry Black. Oh, gotcha. So it'd be Dick <laughs> Berry Black. Dick Berry Black. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something. I totally forgot what it was. Oh, so, uh, one of my, uh, one of my, uh, friends, uh, from the tennis world back when I was in the tennis world, right? Uh, her middle name is popsicle. Seriously. Seriously. Wow. Nice. Because the parents allowed her older sisters to name her middle name. Wow. And so okay. the older sisters were like, two and five at the time. So they concluded popsicle would be a great middle name. So that's interesting. Her, her middle name is popsicle. My <laughs> grandfather's name was George Washington. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that was because he was like the seventh child uh-huh. or of the, you know, of the, you know, his parents and they didn't plan on naming. They didn't think about naming the child <laughs> until the, you know, popped, it popped out, out. And uh-huh. they're like, what's its name? And they're like, I don't, I don't know. Just put George Washington down. And then later, <laughs> like shortly after, they they named him Max, and okay. they called him Max his entire life. And then he went to enlist in the military, uh-huh. and they're like, "Your name's not Max. <laughs> <laughs> That's not your name. <laughs> your name's George Washington." Uh, and he's like, what? "What?" And so then he had to go through the whole name change process. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious yeah so whatever name they threw on the the birth certificate was was his actual name but they called him something else and then oh my god that's he didn't sim- know about it similar thing oh my this is gonna go down a big rabbit hole here on this podcast <laughs> this is not an off-roading podcast today ladies and gentlemen <laughs> um my uh in-laws had the same thing happen to them wow Where like their one of their parents was he went his whole life thinking his name was one way and it wasn't. And it was like really his uh, first name and middle name were flipped. Okay. And so he had been going his whole life off of his middle name as sure. his first name. And yeah, he went to, he went to, they had to go get a death certificate for him. Oh, and they were like, the hospital is like, no, there's no record of this dude ever being born here. And <laughs> they're like, but we have a, a guy named this born here on that date. And they right. were like, no, that can't be right. That wasn't. I mean, you have his names flipped. They're all no. This is the record that we. This is. A, they're like no, it's, and it's became a big old thing. So yeah, sure. Um, and then speaking of name changes, okay. <laughs> just because I'm always like bitching and complaining about user experience, UX, right? You and I, we talk mm-hmm. about that a lot. Um, and this may be going on the other podcast as well, which I had another person ask me about where our yeah. other podcast is looking. Cause I can't believe nobody's found it, but I now. know, right? He yeah. was getting pretty fed up He goes, I have looked everywhere and I can't find it. Good. <laughs> and so I finally, I finally, I told him where to find it at and he goes, Oh, Oh, that makes sense. Okay. And just laughed about it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, uh, my wife, the secretary 
was, uh, you know, she's finishing up going through getting her name changed and everything. And, uh, we waited changing her name on the health insurance until she changed jobs because, right. um, we were using her job as the health insurance. And, uh, when she went to change jobs, that's when she changed her name on the health insurance. And turns out just by happenstance that, uh, the new company's health insurance is the same health insurance company that her old, co- her old company used, right? So when she got her new health insurance card, it had her new last name on it, but her same member ID number as it was before with the old company. Okay, cool. And so they she's figured, like, awesome. They, they did it. They figured it out. Like, yeah. I got my name on here. I didn't have to do a bunch of paperwork. That's blah, blah, nice. Blah. So she was like, yeah, that's good. So in her app and on all of her medicines now, it still shows her old last name. Her maiden name. Her maiden name. Okay. That's... And, that's weird. Yeah. I couldn't figure that out. No, they can't. And so she called and was like, Hey, can we just figure this out? Can we just connect the dots? You guys have already figured out that you've already connected the, you've dots. already <laughs> connected the dots. Can we just get this fixed for however, why ever it needs to be fixed? And they're like, Oh, you have to do an actual, you have to do a name change in the system. And she goes, no, you've already, you've already you've done, already the, done name. the name. You, change. It's already here. Now, what do you mean? You <laughs> yeah. have to, no, that's what? Yeah. And so they've, they literally told her, yeah, there's nothing we can do. You have to fill out this form, this film, this form. You have to turn, send in your marriage certificate and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, no, I have my mem- My insurance card says my new name with the old ID number. Like if we look up my member ID number, what name comes up? And they're like, you know, blah, Larson. And she goes, Sec- yeah, secretary. So Larson. yeah, secretary Larson. <laughs> so why is my app still showing my old name and all my medications are coming with my old name on it? And they're like, oh yeah, because you're everything that was set up before was set up under your old name. And she goes, okay, can we like change that? Can you update it please? Yeah, update it. And they're like, no, you have to do a name change form. And she goes, that makes no sense. <laughs> no, that and she does was not. like flipping out at the phone. I was like, what the hell is going on over there? Um, and then she can't, she can't even do it because we sent her marriage certificate off to get her passport updated. So like, we're not getting the marriage certificate back for like six months. Yeah. <laughs> so we're like, you should, okay, I guess you, we're stuck in this limbo. Land her, now. Like, why did you update it without my permission? Can you please put it back to my maiden name? Yeah, maybe <laughs> Let's see what they say. <laughs> I didn't want that name on there. (laughs) So I don't know how, what's going to impact it. Every, her medication still seemed to be coming just fine. So Mm -hmm. we're kind of like, Oh, I guess we'll just let it go until we get the marriage to get back and then deal with it then. But it's just like, what the hell user experience people like this is not difficult to figure out that and customer service, (laughs) right? Oh man. Um, Anyway, yeah. so back to off-roading. Welcome sure. to Snail Trail 4x4, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Too funny. Um, housekeeping stuff. What do we got on the agenda for housekeeping? I know that um, we talked a little bit about stuff, and I think should we just uh, not announce anything to keep everybody from getting confused and uh, just let it let it slide till next month? I don't know what you're referring to, but I rate four by four is open. Yes. So if you don't want to be on uh, Patreon, move over to I rate four by four. Mm-hmm. We're not sure what we're going to do. I think let's just leave it like that. We're not sure if we're going to close Patreon down, yeah. leave the $5, leave a $10. That's what I was talking $20. about. $20. <laughs> I'm not, we're still discussing that. I think we alluded that we were going to reduce everybody to $5 mm-hmm. last week. Mm-hmm. Not sure what we're going to do yet. Um, we're thinking about UX. Yeah. We're thinking <laughs> so. about the user experience. If you yeah. don't want to move over to I rate four by four, we're probably going to leave Patreon open, um, to at some level. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we would highly suggest everybody moving over to I rate four by four, just cause it's a really cool community. It's a really cool community and there's a lot more that we can do with it in terms of interacting with everybody. So exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, move on over, move on over, um, go over to I rate four by four.com, create an account. And then up at the top, there's the support slash donate button. Click that. It'll take you to another page where there's a bunch of kind of like drop down expandable sections. Uh, go down to the watch, listen, discuss section, and you'll see the different snail trail four by four tiers there. If you want to get in on the gift box for October, you have to sign up over on irate four by four by April 30th. Everything will shut down just like normal. How the gift box always works each year. Um, everything will shut down 
come May 1st for the gift box tier. Yes. So, um, did you say gift box or giveaway? I forgot. It's on. I meant give. I meant gift box. Okay. If I said something else, sorry. Gift box tier. Gift box tier. Gift box, gift tier. box <laughs> tier and giveaway tier are closing down for that month, but the giveaway tier will start up again <laughs> for May. Yeah, <laughs> for May. Yes. But the gift box tier will definitely be closing. Yes, for six months. Mm-hmm. And I have an idea for the next gift box tier, so Woo-hoo! we need to talk to about that offline. Cool. I like um, it. Yeah, and so that's that should be fun and exciting. Mm-hmm. But for this giveaway, mm-hmm. this month's giveaway, we're April. giving a, April Welding National Welding Month. We Tyler's are, month. Oh yeah, that too. Tyler. I forgot. <laughs> we are giving away a Stage One Bun Welder. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. I kind of mm-hmm. wish I could put my name in the hat because mm-hmm. I definitely could use a trail welder. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, I feel kind of bad because now I technically have two trail welders. <laughs> Well, well, you got one okay. and a half. One and a half. That works. Yeah, you have to use the one you <laughs> yeah. currently have for, with the other one. Yes, that is but true. You, you can't use that one separately. True. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, we'll talk to them. I'm sure we can uh, work up something to uh, get you one and uh, find some way to do a product rate or something. So, oh yeah, I'm sure. Um, no, but uh, yeah, we have the bun trail welder. So uh, if people are looking to purchase a bun trail welder, I've actually seen quite a few people saying after they listen to the episode with uh, Sue and Chai that they're looking at buying a bun trail welder now. Um, hold off for a little bit. Uh, the website, their current website is broken. Um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't fully function and some of the links are kind of not working and uh, their website person has ghosted them. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so um, I'm currently working on rebuilding them a whole new website um, and uh, getting that up and running. So I think by the end of this week, by the time the listener meetup happens this weekend, woo, woo. Um, the new website will be fully up and operational. So awesome. Yeah. Um, they are increasing their prices slightly um, just due to cost increases that have happened recently and mainly shipping increases, yeah. shipping cost increases. That hit me too. Yeah. Um, and so uh, they are going to have new prices. Um, if you talk to Sue, they're really cool people. Um, she's really uh, considerate of a lot of things. So if you talk to her and just say that you were looking to purchase a welder before um, the website change, um, then I'm, she might honor the old prices for you. So. Right. We also might be able to work a discount code in. That is true. Yeah. And we did get a discount code for Carnage Welders. We did indeed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? I don't know. It was a ST 4x4 welding month. ST 4x4 welding month. Yep. It's in the show notes as of right now. As of the episode uh, that we launched with Joe, um, last Monday, um, that discount code is in the show notes at the top of the discount code section. Cool. So, and that's only going to be active here through the end of the month. Oh, what's okay. really cool about that though, is that he's currently right now doing a uh, free shipping. No. Oh, okay. So he has a discount code at the top of his website for free shipping. And he said that you can combine those discount codes. Sweet. So he made them so they can combine. So you can get free shipping and 10% off a carnage welder, which will save you like 150, 200 bucks almost. Maybe yeah. 150 bucks altogether. I can't imagine. I mean, shipping, what was it like 40 pounds? Yeah. 46 pounds. Dang. Yeah. My panels are 10 and 15 pounds. So yeah, <laughs> but yours is a nice big package. Those are big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what she said. Uh, giggity. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to get in for the giveaway, uh, go check that out on mm-hmm. irate four by four. Sign up for the giveaway tier, and uh, if you want to continuously be or continuously be in there, uh, make sure to click on the what is it the reoccurring payments? Yeah, yep, that's uh, the subscription payments. Yeah, that's another thing I want to um, run through before the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Is I do want to look at who signed up on Patreon mm-hmm. and see if they signed up as a reoccurring payment. Because if you guys didn't sign uh-huh. up for reoccurring payments, you are probably planning on being in the giveaway next month, mm-hmm. but you won't be. Yeah, I don't. I'm pretty sure the only purchase option that Austin set up on iRate was recurring payments. Okay. Yeah. Well, so then that either would be recurs good. every month or annually, depending on which one you chose. <laughs> Got so. it. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, I'll do the user (laughs) users uh, benefit and look into that on my end to make sure that it, it is that way for everybody. Cool. 
Sounds good. Um, let's see what other updates. Housekeeping. I don't think we got much more. We st- spoke to Borja, and he, uh, we're going to ship him <laughs> the knife. Yeah, I guess we learned how often he listens to the podcast, huh? Yep. <laughs> yep. We did that uh, as well. Uh, do we have any reviews? Oh, we do have some reviews. So reviews are here and uh, we got two more since the last time we read them. So okay. we're now at 378. Ooh. All so right. We're over two more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Over halfway to the, um, I don't know how, how to say that. <laughs> we're From implement 350 another formula to 300 <laughs> to 400. Uh, we are over halfway to that giveaway swag pack giveaway. Nice. That's we're over. I'm. We're over halfway to the giveaway. If you're going from 350 to 400, yeah, and we're also <laughs> over the giveaway towards four 500. That is true. <laughs> so <laughs> we're over halfway. I'll just leave it at that. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Blanket statements are great. Uh, so this one, the first uh, review we have here uh, was from Wow Drawer. Thanks, Wow Drawer. It said not Wow Draw. Oh, it is Wow Drawer. Sorry, Wow Drawer. <laughs> I can't read the middles of words very well. No. So it's a dyslexia thing. Uh, best Toyota talk podcast, but not the best off road podcast. What a dick. I'm skipping this one. Uh, next one How is many stars. Did he give us five? What? Yeah, I don't get it. You would assume if we're not the best that you downgrade us. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm a, definitely. Is he a Jeep owner? I'm definitely not reading this one. Okay. <laughs> it mentions uh, another podcast that I don't. I don't want to talk about right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, do they kidding. have to do with wine and whiskey and wheeling? Yeah, pretty much. Got it. Yeah. Uh, well, at least wine and whiskey. No wheeling over there going on. So. Um. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I don't know. When was the last time they went even engaged? Well, King of the Hammers. King of the Hammers. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's been a good two months, two and a half months since they've done any kind of wheeling. They're fair weather wheelers. You got to be okay. They're from California. Well, yeah. One of them, one of them is a fair (laughs) weather wheeler and the other one chases another season. That's true. (laughs) With another sport. Yeah. Um, So anyways, I'll read it. It says, Jimmy and Tyler are great to listen to on the long road trips, but only if I run out of... I'm a, uh, I'm going to other podcast, this other podcast, ep- <laughs> <laughs> wheeling wine and whiskey episodes first, <laughs> he said, and then in parentheses, this is the superior podcast. Uh, all jokes aside, this is a great podcast for Jeep bashing and Toyota talk. Keep up the good work guys. <laughs> so, so he's okay with the Jeep bashing. I guess so. He must drive a Ford. I don't know what's going on with him. He's like, I mean, he's, he's put my bipolar. Emotion, he's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> or he has, she. My emotions are on an emotional roller coaster uh, right now. They're great, <laughs> except they're not as good as this person. But yeah. I like the Jeep bashing <laughs> and the Toyota talks good too. <laughs> yeah. Five stars, but it's five not stars, the best. Off but you're not the best. Uh, whatever. Anyways. Thanks for the five stars. Thanks for the confusion. <laughs> Next and one. The talk. Yeah. Next one is from scene Taylor. Hey, Taylor it says great info and great chats. Just heard the Rubicon episode and the knowledge that the hosts as well as the guests had was quickly evident. The level headed way more the guests than the hosts. I think uh, yeah. the, the level headed way they talked about conservation on the trail and keeping it open by being respectful was also a great point. Thank you. So yeah, thank you. We try and uh, we try and keep things open and uh, respectful when dealing with kind of sensitive topics like that. So, you know, um, I was going to talk to you this about off air sometime mm-hmm. and I keep forgetting about it, but maybe on episode 320, we need to get them back on. <laughs> we do. Um, yeah, we need to get them back on for sure. I, li- I really like the idea we were thinking about doing uh, going through the trail with them. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know if Marlin, look out for that. Merlin gets onto the trail though. He anymore. can ride along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next one. And last one for today is from slow money. Slow money. Is that a Jeremy Borja's nickname? Slow money. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe Eddie's. Maybe Eddie's Maybe. or Sean's. <laughs> we still need to get Eddie on the podcast. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Since we, He's in Moab We've right interviewed now. all the other Turo tire racers. <laughs> yeah. I had a, a, uh, another acquaintance, um, 
send me a photo of him and Eddie and saying, guess who's here? <laughs> is, you know, and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it says great podcast. Just found your podcast. First listen was the Rubicon trail history episode. Cool. It was nice hearing the history behind the trail that we all love. I look forward to an episode where you get the story behind all the obstacles names. Keep up the good content. Oh, damn. <laughs> there we go. We need to do that. <laughs> Speaking of. <laughs> There are some good stories, that's for sure, behind those names. Yes, there are for sure. Um, cool. So we'll get into that. That's a, definitely a goal of ours this summer is to get back out on the trail with those guys and uh, go through some of the obstacle names. So uh, let's see. I think that does it for all the housekeeping. Yeah. That's good I, enough I for the so. show. Good enough, right? Yeah. For this good, one. good enough is good enough. Good enough. One of my life mottos. <clears throat> the other one's fake it till you make it. Sounds Which good. works great in bed. So. That's good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. Good enough is good enough. Oh, man. Anyways, uh, man, where do we begin? I don't even know where to begin with this one. <laughs> with this episode with this 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 discussion that's coming here what have you done since (laughs) the last time we recorded in order have you did you do anything up and uh you did some tea case work i did okay so yeah let's talk about that because that's a uh that'll i think lead into the other stuff um okay so uh, friday was you know whatever it was a long day just getting orders out we uh so we launched the compressor, as we said, and uh, the ten six compressor for Morflate. And um, this week on Monday was uh, uh, the we opened it up to the next wait list, right? Okay, so you opened it up to the first wait list, the people that uh, mm-hmm. the first one hundred people that you mm-hmm. had listed. You sent the email out, gave them two weeks, gave them two weeks. Mm-hmm. If people bought it, they bought it. If they didn't, mm-hmm. they didn't. And now the two weeks are gone and you're opening it up to the people that were on the second wait list. Yeah, for June, for the batch of compressors coming in in June. Okay. So um, that's just, you know, dealing with the compressors, keeping uh, more flight crew busy here. Um, and so uh, Saturday, uh, Friday, uh, we had, we also got in more tire repair kits. Oh, yeah. So now that we mm-hmm. have a good stock of the tire repair kits and we're going to start uh, hitting the marketing scene on those pretty shortly here, pretty hard. Um, they're just phenomenal. I mean, it's uh, we designed it in a way that in theory for like quick day trips, maybe close by weekend trips, you don't need to carry a spare tire anymore. Right. Was the whole thought behind it. Right. And I think we hit it pretty well. I think we've got 99% short of 99% of everything covered short of, you know, smashing in your rim, <laughs> your wheel out on the trail. I think our, uh, our kit should be able to cover pretty much anything that happens to a tire. So what you're telling me is you need to carry a spare wheel. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You don't need a spare tire. You don't spare need a wheel. spare tire. Anymore. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, That's and a lot so less weight. It is a lot less weight. I mean, you know, at the, the full kit is 125 bucks, but you know, spare tire is <laughs> right now upwards of $1,200. If you're looking at Maxis. Shit, so, I know. um, friggin' 37 inch trepidors. The stickies right now are $1,200 a piece. Not if you contact sidetracked off road. No, that's who I just talked to about it. Yeah. Oh, he I said the re- price <laughs> on 30 inch stickies. Not 30 inch. Sorry, 37 inch stickies. Yeah. You bastard. <laughs> yeah, I was just over talking he to likes him. me more, I guess. I guess so. No, I was talking to him about some other tires for my dad. My dad's tire conundrum uh, is continuing. But, anyways, he goes, Yeah, you used to be able to get them for like 400 bucks. And yeah. now they're 1200 a piece retail value. I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh, was he talking? I think he was confused on his prices for 37s and 40s. Maybe it was the 40s. Maybe I think because we were just talking about obscure obscene tire prices, but he um, gave me a number that was, it was under a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe, maybe it was the, maybe it was the forties that he was talking yeah. about. The, the 40 inch trepidors stickies are $1,200 a piece right now. Yeah, something that's like that. Nuts. I saw some, they weren't stickies. Yeah. I think they're dot approved. Okay. On some 40 inch trepidors on a uh, Facebook marketplace down in the Bay area mm-hmm. for four of them for 2,800 bucks. <laughs> that's a phenomenal price. I know <laughs> I almost bought them. Wow. Because I'm highly suggesting getting new tires for Moab. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was looking at my tires and they're like, they're cracking. And yeah. They're old, <laughs> they're, and, they're old tires. And I went and reviewed the rules for cruise Moab and they're mm-hmm. like, they have the dot set, approved but, only. Yeah. Dot. Well, not dot. Yeah. I don't know if they were dot approved only, but it was like, 
good maintained tires yeah. or something like that. <laughs> gotcha. Like, I don't okay. Know if these would classify. <laughs> I was like, I'll rub dirt in the cracks before yeah. I go to get the review. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, good thing they do the the tech inspection there in a, a dirt area. So exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Anyways, so God, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, the tire repair kits. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so yeah, get a look into the Morflate Extreme tire repair kits. Um, and I, in theory, you shouldn't have to carry a spare tire anymore. But like, if you're doing a long trip or like a a long distance trip, you know, spare tires. I'm not saying spare tires are you never have to carry one ever anymore. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but the whole thought is you're keeping trips shorter. You're closer to home. You know, leave the spare tire at home. You're going to take so, one to Moab, a spare tire. I don't I'm taking one of yours <laughs> again, <laughs> or I'll tell my dad to bring one up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, let's see here. So after that was that just kept us busy Friday. And then we uh, also recorded with Joe on Friday. Yep. And then I went home on Saturday I started tearing apart the forerunner uh, to put the TK in, and I was really hoping that we'd be able, I'd be able to get it all back up and get it all done on Saturday. Um, didn't quite work out that way because I like to let our TV fully cure, and I needed to use our TV on the whole thing this time. So I ended up tearing it down to the crawl box, right? So, okay. so um, you took the T case off the back, but left the crawl box attached. Yeah, uh, kind of. I left the gears attached. So okay. when you pull out the crawl box, um, got it. It leaves the adapter plate between the crawl box and the transmission, which mm-hmm. is some of the gear. One of the gears attached to kind of thing. Um, and so I, uh, I just pulled off the crawl box, which brought off the input gear with it. Um, and then, uh, inspected everything and, um, everything looks great in there. Um, but it was just all leaking still. So, and turns out one of the studs, the one of the bottom studs I thought was stripped was not stripped. It just had come loose from me tightening it. So, uh, but it had come so loose that I couldn't uh, turn it back in by hand. Um, and so, but I couldn't get the nut off either. So mm. I ended up having to cut the stud <laughs> oh, to get it to, to, to get the adapter plate and everything off. So, um, got it all over and then realized that um, I didn't have enough studs now. And so I had to go get studs from Morgan at sidetracked off road. He had some in stock, luckily saved my ass again. Um, and uh, so anyways, just between letting RTV cure and uh, having to go over to Morgan's to pick up the studs and then going and picking up my birthday gift to myself. Um, I guess it was technically from my wife as well. Um, that took up all the, the whole day. On Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. And so I was able to uh, get the crawl box and the adapter plate back up in the Forerunner. And then the T-case, I had to wait until Sunday to put it up in there. Um, And so um, on... No, sorry, I got the T-case put up Saturday night as well, but I wasn't able to tighten everything down. Okay. So I let the RTV cure on the T-case overnight Saturday. And then my goal for Sunday was to go in, torque everything down, fill up the T case with gear oil, and then um, put clutch fluid <laughs> in the forerunner and see if that's my clutch issue. Um, and then, uh, but that all kind of went out the window. So um, my birthday gift to myself came, was came in handy, did come in handy. So <laughs> what it was your birthday gift to yourself. I went out and bought the Springfield XD nine millimeter pistol. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the four inch barrel. And, you know, I kept sitting there. I was like, you know, I want to go try these other guns too. There was a couple others that people had recommended that I go try before making a purchase decision. Mm -hmm. And it finally just came down to the point. I was like, I don't have time to go out and set up demoing these different handguns. Like I know that I really like the XD nine millimeter. Um, So, you know what? I know this is probably not going to be my only handgun, my only pistol, my only gun. So I'm just going to go and buy it and um, I'll try out others later on. Right. Um, But at least I can have something I know I like um, that works really well um, and uh, I can start, you know, using it and getting it broken in and all this other stuff. So yeah, 
and I got to hold it today, and mm-hmm. it's—I mean, it's a great, comfy gun in mm-hmm. the hand. It's a good weight to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a lot of really cool safety features, which mm-hmm. I, I kind of like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I thought it—I mean, it's a great gun. And then the sheath that Bandit can Ryan at Bandit yeah, the holster made, he made, the yeah. holster is awesome. I I just love the work that he does, man, mm-hmm. with holsters and sheaths. Um, so that was a, a funny story too. How we we ended up getting into the building the holster. So. Um, anyways, I got, I picked up the handgun on Saturday. That was the end of the 10 day waiting period, um, okay. for guns here in California, right? So you purchase a gun, you have to wait 10 days to cool off period. Um, yeah. and, uh, when I went in, I was looking originally at the used ones mm. cause I was like, they're already pre broken in. I know that they're going to be good to go. Um, and I asked the guy, I was like, what's the difference between a used or a, a new gun? Cause the prices were only like within 5% of each other. Mm. And he goes, honestly, it's just a warranty. And I was like, okay, um, so what's the warranty on a Springfield? And he goes, lifetime. I was like, oh, pff, that's worth 5% to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a lifetime warranty on the handgun. I, I was like, oh, okay. Um, so anyways, I went with a brand new Springfield rather than a used one. Um, and uh, so I picked it up on Saturday and uh, immediately told Ryan, I was like, hey, let's get together sometime and we can make some holster for it. And uh, I'm in no hurry to get it done. So... You know, if you just want to stop by the, cause he works kind of near the warehouse here. Oh, okay. At least he has to go by the warehouse in order to go home. And so he usually <laughs> ends up stopping by in the afternoon and spends like four hours here <laughs> now. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, just, you know, stop by whenever and you can make it and I'll come pick it up at like a beer Wednesday or something. He goes, okay, cool. And, um, so Sunday, my goal was to, you know, tighten everything down on the T case, put gear oil in it, get the forerunner up and running because I really want to take it to uh, our listener meetup this weekend that we yes. have in two days from now. When you're listening to this episode, if you're listening to it on launch day, right? <laughs> so April 16 on Saturday is the listener meetup down at high water brewing in Lodi. I'm excited. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of freaking people there. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a slight <laughs> chance of rain. Oh, nice. So just come prepared. Uh, We're going regardless. Yeah. Just if you're going to come out also. Well, the, those fair weather wheelers from wheeling wine and whiskey may not come. Then, yeah, probably not, which will be a benefit They'll for, for everybody. show up in a Ford. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee you they will do. Mm. <laughs> um, and then they'll have to get a tow back home. Oh, burn. Sorry. Anyways, um, maybe my truck. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it's your truck. <laughs> if I have brake problems on the way down. <laughs> right. Um, all right. So we'll get back to Sunday here. Um, Sunday. So I go out into my garage to, you know, put on my gloves and put on my, uh, my dirty work shirt. And, uh, I walk into the garage. I'm like, fuck, I left my garage door open last night, um, which I've done a couple times at my old house, but I never have done yet at this house. Right. And I could have sworn that I had my, uh, Vivint to my home security system set to close my garage door at like 10 or 11 PM or something like that. If it's still open, right? Sure. Okay. Cause it, it has a, a garage module that controls your garage door. Right. And so I could have sworn I had that set. Um, but I guess I didn't for whatever reason. I don't know why, but anyways, regardless of the reason the garage door was open in the morning. So I immediately start looking around the garage. I'm like, all right, the welders are all here. The chainsaws here. All my tools are here. Nothing looks missing. My grinders are here. I had a bunch of tools sitting out all over the place. The forerunner still there? Forerunner I did out on the street, not in oh, the garage, because okay. I still had a bunch of stuff in the garage from selling my grandpa's truck. Okay. So um, there was a uh, back. I'm kind of looking around the garage, and I'm, I'm like, whoa, there's a couple tarps in here that are not mine. Yeah. And one of them was like the landscaping tarp that they will put leaves into. Sure. And then, you know, you know, tie up the corners and they're reusable trash bags, white. Yeah. Yeah. Nylon mesh kind of bag thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, that's weird that this tarp is in here. I mean, I guess it was, it was windy, super windy, super fucking windy on Saturday night. Right. Yeah. And so I'm like, I guess theoretically the wind could have on Sunday and on Sunday too, all day. Yeah. I was like, theoretically, the wind could have blown a, a tarp or a bag, the you know, landscaping bag in here, but like we don't really get landscapers down this road here. They're on the other road opposite of us. Um, the other side of the the block, but not on our road. They never come down our road. So I thought it was weird. I was like, eh, theoretically, I guess it's possible. It could have been blown could around blown and blown in. in. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And so I'm like, whatever. So I go to pick up the tarp and move it. 
and there's two fucking feet underneath it. Yeah. And I was like, uh, uh and I just froze like I'm like nuts. There's a fucking person in my fucking garage. I'm sorry for the F bombs everybody, but (laughs) this is I was well, I think anybody would be dropping F bombs at this point. And so I'm just sitting there like frozen for a second and I put the tarp and then the foot moved right and I so I put the tarp down really quick and first thought that goes through my head is okay. At least it's alive (laughs) (laughs) and I don't have a goddamn dead body here in my garage. Yeah. And so I'm like, that's a, I guess a bonus. uh, Yeah. I mean, it's a bonus, but it's also then becomes really a risky situation at that point. Right. Uh huh. And so I'm like, fuck, what do I do? And the first thought that comes into my head is I just picked up a gun yesterday. I I need to go get that ready. (laughs) And so I'd like, I don't know whether this is a male or female. It looked like a male. Like that's some pretty hefty calves. (laughs) Okay. And, uh, and so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go and, uh, get the gun. So I pull out the gun. Like I had it all, you know, stored properly with the ammo and everything separate from the gun and the gun is locked with a cable lock. And so I'm like sitting there pulling the cable lock off the gun and everything. I was like, this is way like not um, efficient. If I need to use this gun from somebody coming in the house, right? Well, isn't that the whole argument between gun safety Absolute, and not? <laughs> absolutely it is, right? And so um, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, all right, so now I'm loading the magazine with the, the self-defense rounds and putting it in and then I'm like, how do I carry this gun around now? Like I, I'm like, I need, I want to take the gun out there as I'm waking this person up, but I don't necessarily want to be holding it in my hand, like putting it in their face as I'm waking them up. I don't want to necessarily escalate the situation. Mm -hmm. My whole goal is to deescalate the situation. They probably just need to be woken up and asked to leave and they'll most likely will just leave. (laughs) But if anything happens, like what do I do? That's that's a good thought, (laughs) right? Hey, person that yeah. is in my garage randomly, mm-hmm. would you please vacate my property? Yeah. You, you, I don't know if that would go well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know if it'll go well. What was their intent for being here in the first place? <laughs> right? Wait, right? In your fucking garage. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so I'm like, didn't okay. you have security cameras and stuff? Yes. Yeah, so the, that's, uh, we're going to get to that. Okay. So, um, I end up, you know, just putting it in my waistband on my, my pants that I was wearing. Yeah. And I go out into the garage and I'm like, <clears throat> I'm standing there and I'm like, Hey, being pretty loud. Hello. Hey person. Good morning. No response. Serious. Nothing. Didn't huh. move under the tarp. Didn't acknowledge me. Nothing. And so I'm like, okay, this is not good. Now this just kind of raises the stakes a little bit. If they're not answering, they're probably passed the fuck out because they're on something. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, now if I have to now, if I really need to wake them up, I'm going to have to go over and, you know, f- get physical with them, roll them around, push them, nudge them, k- shove them a little bit, maybe poke them with a stick. That's or- what I would do. <laughs> I think I'd get one of my like 20 <laughs> foot long pieces of dom tubing right, and be like, right? whack, whack, whack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so anyways, I, so I go back inside real quick and I just kind of, I went and found the secretary and I was like, Hey, this is what's going on. I didn't even tell her. I just said, I'm going outside right now. If you hear any shouting or if you hear a gun go off, lock the doors and just call nine one one. And she goes, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and she goes, what's going on? So I explained what's going on and she goes, how about we just lock the door now and call nine one one? And I was like, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> I was like, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. So we essentially, that's what we did. We locked all the doors in the house, um, left the garage door open so that if they wake up and happen to leave, we can let them leave rather than being like, yay, we caught a person, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that, there's a then, whole nother problem. If you're yeah, keeping them in ex- your house. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> Oh <laughs> um, yeah, that's called kidnapping. I agree, Tyler. right? <laughs> so, because somebody or else is like, you should. In just, this case, it would be person napping, right? And then they, then somebody told me they were like, you should just shut your garage. And I'm like, no, that's a bad. If I catch the person now, that's a different scenario than what's happening right now. Right? <laughs> they're like, oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we just shut all the doors, locked everything up, and then um, I sat um, where I can see the front yard exit of the garage and 
right in front of the garage door into the house. Right. And your front door and my for front whatever door. reason. Hey, you yeah. can see all that. I can see all of that. And I okay. had, you know, the gun in hand ready to go in case somebody came trying to, you know, stomp in the door or something. So I called the police and they're like, oh, that's weird. You have somebody sleeping in your garage. We're like, yes. They're like, have you acknowledged that they're not allowed to be there? I said, I verbally said, Hey, can you leave? And there was no response from the person. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll send somebody out right away. And I said, okay, cool. It took them an hour and 15 minutes to send somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like, of it. So you, I know the most of this story, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. I was thinking about that. I mean, like and I don't want to de-escalate the situation, but it's you. You're necessarily not in the biggest threat. Absolutely, and they're not threatening anybody. Absolutely, I right? Mean, there was no there was no immediate threat to life or yeah, anything. I do understand that it like you wanted this done with and uh, <laughs> and washed of yeah. your hands and like yeah. th- whatever the situation was going on mm-hmm. is done and uh, you know. But the and I was thinking about it after the fact after everything was yes. over. It was like, yep. well, you weren't like. Everybody was safe and nobody yes. was in danger. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah. but yeah. And at, like when you in the situation, yeah. waiting an hour and a half sucks. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> really, yes. yes. In the situation, I was like, well, this is fucking stupid. Like what if we need to go somewhere and we need this person removed oh, sure. now? Yeah. Like what if, or what if this person all of a sudden does start becoming violent? Yes. Like what do then I do? It's worse. What yeah. am I doing? What am then I doing? Like, it escalates. <clears throat> it escalates. Yeah. And uh, so, um, I called a couple of cop buddies afterwards and I was like, what the hell do I like the situation ended just fine. It ended as good as it could have ended. Okay, right. We'll get to that in a second. Um, or do you want to talk? No, about just, okay, let's go through to, and finish up the situation. So yeah, um, the cops show up an hour and 15 minutes later. Mm-hmm. They immediately walk into the garage and uh, they had a canine unit with them as well. They left the canine in the car, but the canine was like going crazy in the car barking because his handler was being loud and boisterous Oh, okay. with uh, a perp, right? And so the dog is getting loud and uh, um, rowdy in the car. And then my dog starts getting loud and rowdy because he's the hearing the oh, canine yeah. unit. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I'm, I'm like I'm trying I'm to quiet trying to turn down get everybody, you know, separated and moved away from each other so that I can pay attention to what's going on. And um, the cops come in. I hear them you know, start off fairly quiet saying, Hey, how's it going? And then, Hey, hello, lady, wake up like lady. Yeah. So it was a female. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and so apparently, um, they handcuffed her and she's, you know, cursing at them and yelling at them. And There's they're some like F bombs dropped in the video. I oh, saw. yeah. Yep. And so they're going, she's going off on them and they're like, no, this is not your house. Are you aware of where you are right now? And like, I don't think she was. I don't think she don't knew think where she, she was at all. No, I don't think she did. <laughs> no, because <laughs> she was cursing at them saying, why are you removing me and blah, blah. You don't know what you're doing and blah, like yelling at them. And um, anyways, they got her cuffed and put into the other car without the canine. Um, and then the guy, the handler, the canine handler came up and he goes, rings the doorbell and so we go out there and I'm like, hey, how's it going? He goes, first thing he says is, hey, really, I sincerely apologize about the response time. Oh, really? Like, first thing out of his mouth. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, okay, that's kind of nice. Um, they realized that they had a long response time. Um, and so and he went on. He goes, yeah, you know, she's out of here. Um, completely semi harmless situation. Um, they think that she's homeless. They, she had no identification on her. Um, mm-hmm. She had nothing to key hold, keep identification in. The only possessions she had was three tarps. Um, and he goes, he goes, hey, let's look around your garage. Let's make sure that all your stuff is here, that she didn't leave any of her stuff in here. And we looked around, didn't find anything else of hers. Um, all my stuff was there and accounted for. And so he goes, I mean, technically, we can't charge her for anything. She didn't break and enter. If your right. your garage door was left open, she was probably just walking by and um, saw that. Oh, hey, look, there's a place to sleep for the night mm-hmm. and out of out of the wind. out of the wind and did shelter in. And I was like, I I agree. I think that's probably what happened. And um, and so he goes, do you, if you want, we can hit her record with a trespassing, put trespassing on her record, and 
uh, if you want to go that route. And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about it, man. I said, no harm, no foul. The situation ended, I think, as good as it could have. Um, if I was homeless in that situation or just in a, a freak situation where I needed shelter for the night and I saw somebody's garage door open, you know, I, I, I would probably I would take, probably advantage, take of it. advantage of it too. As yeah. long as you know, I'm not, I'm being respectful and not taking anything and not hurting anything while I'm in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, Hey, don't worry about it, man. I said, just make sure that, you know, she gets relocated or whatever she needs taken care of. It doesn't seem like she's all there. And he goes, he goes, yeah, we definitely kind of had to like physically wake her up. She was not responding at all. <laughs> and I was, she, so he goes, she's probably on something. We don't know. We'll probably take her down to the drunk tank and, and get her sobered up um, and then see what goes on from there. And I was like, cool. Um, awesome. Thanks guys for doing your job and have a good day. And that was pretty much it. Wow. Did he say so, anything in regards to why it was a long wait time or he, just say we have just apologized? He said, he said, you'd be, it's surprisingly busy for a Sunday. Oh. That's all he said. And I was like, I, I get it. And hmm. so, um, yeah, so that was the situation. All right. <laughs> that was so what happened. Somebody <laughs> fell asleep in your garage. <laughs> yeah. You went out there to do work on the forerunner. You found yeah. these tarps. You found that this somebody was underneath it. Mm-hmm. And then you called the cops and then they removed the lady. Yep. It happened to be a lady. And yeah. then, yeah, that's nuts, dude. Right? That's so crazy. <laughs> Fucking nuts. <laughs> so, uh, what, so a few more questions. I got a few yeah. follow up questions. So you called <laughs> other uh, cop buddies and yes. asked, and were you waiting during that time or was this after the fact that you called? This was after the fact. Okay. That I and called, so yeah. the people that you called, what did they more or less say? Um, the first person I called was Frank Yost. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's not, he's not deputized, but he's the head of communications for El Dorado County Sheriff Department. Oh, okay. so he's very familiar with how dispatch works. Okay. And uh, he technically built El Dorado County's dispatch center and dispatch system and the protocols for it. So I asked him, I was like, Hey, what do I do in the situation? If I, if the situation does get escalated, and I now all of a sudden have to deal with this person. What do I do? And he goes, if you have to deal with it, then you deal with it. If the situation is escalating and you have time to inform law enforcement inform, about it, yeah. then you call back to 911. They have a case log of everything going on tied to the phone number and the address right now. So they're keeping track of your case while it's going on. The dispatch center is. So you call back and tell them the situation has escalated and what's going on. Yeah. And there, there's different priority the, levels the for the dispatch calls. trying to get into my house now. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here, you know, yelling at him to leave or whatever. You, yeah, you know, exactly. So then if now, and he said all the priority levels are prioritized based on immediate threat to life. So, right. um, he said the closer you get to immediate threat of life, the higher they will prioritize your call. Uh, makes sense. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. Cool. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. So now I know how it kind of works and why I was like, Hey, I get it. Like there's somebody sleeping in my garage. Nobody's in immediate danger right now. Um, we're a fairly low priority. Yeah. And then I was it's like, like an ER, right? Kind of like yeah. an ER. Like you yeah. have a little kid who's just sniffling sick in the corner mm-hmm. or you have a dude that's having cardiac arrest. Who are you going to help first? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or if you're having a uh, testicular issues and there's some dude sitting next to you with rebar through his arm, who's going to get seen first? Yeah. The tech <laughs> testicular <laughs> issues. I, uh, <laughs> don't ask me how I know. <laughs> we'll get into that on the other podcast. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, priority levels based on immediate threat to life. And I was like, Hey, I get it. If there's other stuff going on, mm-hmm. then yeah, I yeah. should be not prioritized as high, but in right. the situation, I'm like, what's I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. So I'm freaking out. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, And so uh, I talked to another cop buddy and I said, hey, if the situation starts getting escalated from here, because, you know, everything went well. Yeah, it was fine. But but afterwards, now I'm like all these what if scenarios are running through my head. Right. And uh, my other cop buddy, um, our mutual cop buddy said, Mm. you know, honestly, the best thing to do then is to call your neighbors and confront the person with overwhelming numbers. Huh. Um, and that way you can control the situation with overwhelming numbers. Um, and I was like, okay, so like if, 
I have, you know, four buddies. I called buddies up and had them come over and remove the person from my property. That's fine. And he goes, as long as you can remove the person without harming them in that situation, um, then you're fine. If you guys do physical damage, then they have reason to uh, yeah, report domestic report violence. You, yeah, as assault and battery or whatever. Yeah. But hmm. as long as they are not being threatening to anybody and they are not harming anybody, um, then you cannot forcefully remove them from your property. Yeah. If they're just like sitting there not doing anything, then you need to have cops come over and remove them. Right. So um, because that means if you remove them, and they quote unquote claim that you injured them, whether you did or not, they now have reason to press charges. And I was like, interesting. Okay. <laughs> this is good to know. <laughs> yeah. You're making me think of, you know, just interesting scenarios too. But I wonder if, I mean, I know it's your property and I know mm-hmm. it's your house and you have 100% right to be in your, on your own property. Mm-hmm. But I wonder in this situation, if there's even an advantage to you leaving your property, like going to your neighbor's house and vacating and get it like, and you've already notified the police that there's somebody there. So mm-hmm. no matter what happens, yeah, you know, if the person wakes up and goes into your house, mm-hmm. breaks through the locks, mm-hmm. then, you know, and you're not there, you're not going to get injured. Yeah, true. You know, and if they do anything wrong, you know, then that's, that's a, they're screwed with regardless. Kind you know? of. Yeah. I mean, they are. So yeah, if I in know that, that, in it's, that it's situation, a very backwards way of thinking, you yeah. know, like you want to be there to protect your property, protect your things in your house, you mm-hmm. know, but you know, maybe you hide your, some of your valuables and t- you know, and then just, you know, remove yourself for your self preservation. Yes. Right. You know? And so that's an, that's a very interesting thought. And you know, if that was the case, um, then it would come down to, how much do you value your property over the risk of your own life? Mm -hmm. Or how much do you value your property over the other person's life? Yeah. Which is an interesting thought because I had never like, that would never be a question to me. Like if it comes between my stuff and somebody's life, I'll be like, okay, take my stuff. That's what I have insurance for. Right. And um, I think there's a there's also a difference between if they're going to snatch and grab and go mm-hmm. versus some dude laying there that you don't ever know if it's yeah. going to wake up or not. Yeah, you know? right. And that that's right. Like, yeah, if there's somebody laying there, the risk, the immediate risk to your stuff's value is not as high as somebody who's like grabbing your stuff <laughs> and going. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had this conversation with a, a buddy of mine recently, and he goes, he goes, no, I, I very well flat out let people know I value my stuff more than their life and I will be very open and upfront about it. And I was like, yeah, oh, I guess I really never thought of it that way. There is that value. And I'm like, I don't really value my stuff more than other people's lives. So sure. was, it was just something that yeah. I never and hadn't then, really thought about and before. to some extent. And I don't know the law. You're not allowed to attack or hurt them unless they're doing something to possibly hurt you, you know, like Mm -hmm. even if they Mm -hmm. enter your house and, Mm -hmm. and I could be 100, I'd not don't know the law in in Mm -hmm. regard to this, but I believe if they enter your house and they're still not threatening you, Mm -hmm. you don't have any right to hurt them. Correct. Yeah. Because (laughs) now, because the law and us as a society, at least in California, yeah, at least in (laughs) California. So us as a society, quote unquote, right. Yeah. Um, we have deemed that the, uh, the preservation of life is like the highest value, right? Outweighs, monetary. outweighs everything else. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so, uh, that's why, you know, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars keeping homeless people alive <laughs> and the, the insurance companies pick up for it, which is really you and me paying our insurance premiums. Mm-hmm. Right. Or, you know, the emergency room, uh, people go in that don't have in- medical insurance. They go in and the taxpayers end up paying for their medical. Right. <clears throat> so anyways, we as a society have deemed that the value of life is greater than anything else. So if somebody is just taking your stuff. The law says you cannot hurt them because their life is more valuable than your stuff, mm-hmm. according to the law and what we've deemed as a society. Right. Unless they're threatening your life. Yes then you that's when it changes their life. Exactly. And that's where stand your ground or castle laws come into place, which is a whole nother thing that if you are going into becoming a gun owner, you should absolutely understand whether your state has stand your ground laws or castle laws. They don't typically 
do both okay. kind of thing. Well, give me, a, I don't know what they are exactly. So give me the uh, elevator pitch of them. Gotcha. So the high the, level, and I'm yeah. not a lawyer. Do not take this as law advice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Disclaimer what it sounds here, blah, blah, like blah. is castle laws is like you can have a board, like a castle, like uh, I want to say moat, but like a, a wall around your property that mm-hmm. says, if you break this wall, then I can, I could do whatever I kind of want. And the stand your ground is sort of the, it's somewhat opposite sort of. Yeah. So stand your ground is, and they all, both of the laws stem on whether or not you feel like your life is in threatened is right. being threatened, right? Your life is in danger. So stand your gl- stand your ground laws state that no matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in oh. your house, somebody else's house, okay. you're out at a, a, on a street somewhere. Mm-hmm. If you feel like your life is in danger, you're allowed to use deadly force on another individual. Got it. And so, and then castle is only for your house and castle is only for your house. Exactly. Okay. So, um, but castle laws only pertain to if your life is in danger in your house, not necessarily if you're being robbed kind of thing. If Mm -hmm. someone's just walking around your house inside your house at nighttime, right. You know, but the, the thing about stand your ground and castle laws is that typically the, the only person that is left to give a statement to the courts is the is, one who wins is the one who wins. Exactly. <laughs> right. And so it's up to them and it's a subjective no, feeling they threatened me. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's how well you can convince a jury that your life was in, was in danger kind of thing. So anyways, um, stand your ground versus castle laws. Make sure you guys know them. If you're going to become a gun owner and what your state does, make um, sure you know them. If just for your state, that's true. An understanding of what you're allowed to do. Absolutely. So Which anyways, I guess I need to learn more about <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyways, it all ended up good. Um, the, you know, the, the best way to do it is to use an overwhelming threat of force. If somebody is like in that specific situation, I should have, I could have just called up buddies and said, Hey, can you guys come over and make sure that we've got five people here to that one person and hope that when we say, Hey, you need to leave that they actually leave because it's, it would be five versus one if they don't. Right. <laughs> kind of thing. And to um, some extent, maybe you have somebody filming. Yeah. Uh huh. So you have evidence to show the cops that you did not hurt this person. Yes. And so, if you did, then you just delete the film. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> let's move on to the filming part of the situation, right? Okay. Yeah. Cause don't my, you have security? <laughs> yes, I do have a home security system and it has always worked great. Um, I have it has always, as far as I know, it has always alerted me to whenever people walk by, um, pretty much the, the system is set where if you enter into that camera frame for more than one second, the camera will, uh, chirp. It'll whistle at mm-hmm. you. And then it will also send me a pop-up forced pop-up notification on my phone saying that a person was detected on the camera. Right. And the camera responded to that person. Right. So, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but mm-hmm. when did the person come in to the garage or into that view? Three twenty-four a.m. Would you have woken up? No. Okay. I wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the weird thing is that it didn't even notify me. Right. And so when I went to go back and look through all the footage while I was waiting for the cops to see when this person came in my garage, um, my DVR was giving me errors and it was saying that the footage was not there. Hmm. And I was like, interesting. They're, they're, a, they're an electrical wizard, right? I was like, man, it's somebody from Vivint that st- <laughs> <laughs> came into my garage, shut down my system. Blah, blah, blah. Um, they have the perfect frequency. So when they come in, they they can open and unlock everything and it closes all the security. Well, theoretically, a lot of security systems work on Wi-Fi. So if you have something that can overload, uh, the Wi-Fi frequencies, you can shut down somebody's security system. Anyways. Um, I didn't say that I may, I may have to go back and delete that. (laughs) Um, anyways, so I was like, what happened to my security system? Why did my Mm -hmm. DVR go down? And so while I was waiting on the phone with the cops, I was, went on chat support with my security system and was like, Hey, I need this back up and running now because if the cops are, they're taking a long time to get here. And so if I need to go out and re- wake this person up and get them to leave, my goal is going to be to get into my driveway where my cameras can view what's going on. That way, if things get physical and the situation escalates and I have to shoot this person, it's all on camera. 
right as to what's going on mm-hmm. and uh my security system my the technician was immediately like oh this is above my pay grade <laughs> <laughs> and it was like i can't help you with the situation we're escalating this to my boss but like immediately and i was like no 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 just help me f- get my system back up and running that's what your job is he goes he goes you're talking about shooting somebody i'm not involved with this <laughs> essentially i was like dang it <laughs> and then the next guy comes on you're like so i'm not gonna shoot anybody <laughs> right <laughs> i just need my camera on yeah and so eventually i was like look can we just reboot my system and see if it, I just need the cameras operating right now. I'm not worried about finding my DVR footage from last night at this point in time. I just need it working now. And he goes, okay, I can reboot your system remotely. I said, okay, thank you. And so they did that and everything started working again. Um, and then the, the escalated team called me like right as the cops were pulling up to my house. I was like, I can't talk right now. I got to go. They're like, when would be a good time to call you back? Can I call you back in five minutes or is that not going to work? I was like, I'll call it. Just call me like a couple hours. They're like, okay, can I get a couple pieces of information? We need to make sure that this is really you. And, and what's like, your no. security passcode? I was like, I was like, the cops are here. Bye. I was like, I got to go. And I hung up, <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah. So, uh, after the system rebooted, talk to the cops, let them left. I went, and I started looking back through the footage and my DVR did have all the footage. Oh. And so I took a couple of snippets. So it was really weird. The girl walked by, you know, covering herself in her tarps and noticed my garage was open, walked down the street a little bit, came back like two minutes later and laid down in my driveway. Yeah. For 32 minutes. <laughs> okay. Covered herself in her tarps and laid down in the driveway for 32 minutes. Wow. I'm guessing she was laying down to wait and see if anybody was going to notice she was there or the garage was going to close. Maybe your system actually did whistle. Maybe I just, and it just never sent me the notification. Yeah. And she was like, Oh, I don't know. Like Like, he can't see me under my tarps. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Um, but she laid there for 32 minutes before getting up and walking into the garage. Weird. So she went into the garage at 350, uh, arrived at my my driveway around 325, um, went into my garage at th- around 350. So she was in there from 350 a.m. to about 1115 a.m. Um, 10, 11, 11 a.m., 1115 is when the cops went in the garage to start dealing with the situation. So it's a good sleep. I know. I was like, yeah. man, I could use that much sleep. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> and still would have kept sleeping. Yeah. Right. Dang. So anyways, uh, so fucking crazy. So what did the, so your security system company have to say about your system going down? Um, they had no answer. They're like, we don't know why it went, why it went down. Apparently it, it did record all night. Yeah. So I'm not sure why they think it was something with the access panel, the, the hub that controls my system. Yeah. That's something glitched out on it and it wasn't letting, us access the recordings get through the hub to the recordings for some reason. So anyways, um, it's the systems back up and running and working great. Now, um, the nice thing about Vivint is that there's a lot of, uh, if then controls, customizable controls that you can set. Okay. And so I have now since uh, enabled a few more features <laughs> to the security <laughs> system. Yeah. One of them is the garage door will automatically shut if it's open past 10 p.m. Um, the other one is the garage door will automatically shut whenever the system is armed. I thought I had that enabled too, which I didn't for some reason. Mm, okay. So that's now enabled. And now I have the system to automatically arm whenever we um, lock the door using the keypad on the front door. Cause there's a keypad that we can, you know, make a, a access code for somebody okay. to come in the system. Yeah. Um, so it'll arm whenever we lock the keypad or whenever mine or, and mine and my wife's mobile devices are off of my property premise. Okay. So, wow. <clears throat> there's a, uh, you got a lot of, <laughs> a lot more safety <laughs> happening. It's a like. lot more safety happening now than what was happening before. So, um, Yeah. That's uh that's the story of my Sunday pretty much. So Dude, that's so crazy. <laughs> Fuck it, I right? was reading these texts come through <laughs> on a few different channels because yeah. we, we were you were talking to a few different friends as mm-hmm. as I was driving down to San Francisco because that's what I did this weekend. Gotcha. Yeah. So 
But before I get to my San Francisco trip, Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to give you your birthday present. Oh, Tyler's month. Tyler's month. Woo. Is there even, oh, there is something in here. I didn't know what it was, so I had to open it first. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. (laughs) It's a sign. It's a metal sign that says, warning, my neighbor is a jackass. (laughs) (laughs) Thought you might be able to use those or not. (laughs) Yes. I'll uh, I'll find somewhere to put it up. Put it up in your garage or something. Yeah. Speaking (laughs) of that, the the comment thread on my videos that I put up on Instagram. Yeah. So I put the, I put the the security camera footage up, right? Right. Yeah. I saw him and the The, comment threads are the lady coming in Mm -hmm. and the one of the police removing. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the comment threads are awesome. And, uh, Good old Mr. Ben Hayward. Yeah. <laughs> made a comment about the leaves in my driveway. Uh-huh. He goes, you should blow the leaves off of your driveway <laughs> and then have them end up in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, and then somebody else replied and responded on that as well about my, my leaf blower uh, feelings. <laughs> so um, this yeah, goes right funny. in line with that. Exactly. Yeah. No, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, um, I don't know. It was just a, it was a very interesting day that derailed my whole day. The in-laws were coming over as well, right? Oh, were they? And so they were on their way over while we were waiting for the police to show up, but we didn't want to have to explain to the in-laws over the phone what was going on. And so we were like, Hey, let us know when you get off the freeway. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And they were like, that's a weird thing, but okay, we'll let you know. And we were, if the police hadn't shown up yet, we were going to say, Hey, you should go drive around the block for 30 minutes. (laughs) Go somewhere else. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the in-laws came over. We had to explain to them everything and tell them the whole story. And so did they show before the cops came? They showed up like 15 minutes after the cops left. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and so with the in-laws being there and, uh, they came over to celebrate my birthday essentially. And, um, um, just the whole day was, I didn't get really any work done on Kermit. I got, no. I got that transfer case torqued down the drive shafts put on and the skid plate put on. Um, but then I realized that the skid plate was, it's like to the passenger side, one inch too far. Hmm. So the slots where you bolt the skid plate into the frame yeah. are like, they're like three inches long on the slot. So you have yeah. like this three inches worth of play that you can move the skid plate side to side. Okay. And I ended up tightening, uh, tightening it too far to the passenger side by oh. like an inch. I thought you were like, it was off. Like r- it has skewed incorrectly for some odd reason, like your frame's yeah. off. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So, so I just you put it up incorrectly. I put it up and, and tightened it down before checking it, if it was straight, if it was straight. Okay. and so like my shifters are like up against the, the cab holes, the yeah. holes in the cab and they're all jammed in there. So I need to loosen that back up and move it over like an inch and then put it all back in. But I never did get a chance to put oil in it or, or yeah. check my clutch system or do any of that. And I'm like, ah, that's all right. That sucks. <laughs> Um, so anyways, that was my weekend. How yeah. was yours? <laughs> Mine was better. <laughs> was it that. as eventful? <laughs> it was pretty eventful, but not that type of eventful. It was okay. different. Uh-huh. It's spring break, um, mm-hmm. over here in California this week. And mm-hmm. you know, the, the assistant's a teacher, so she has gotcha. the week off and mm-hmm. the mini assistant has the week off. And you know, I'm like, I don't have the week off. You know, yeah. like I <laughs> <Yeah>. work <laughs> and they're like, but we want to travel. We want to go somewhere. So we, I, I sacrificed a Monday and we went down to San Francisco on Sunday and Monday. You know what you need to do? You just need to get, uh, a job as a shop teacher. Yeah. That way <laughs> you, I actually, you can have similar schedules as this. We assistant. have, <laughs> um, I have some friends. We have a mutual friend, um, mm-hmm. that is a, uh, uh, he's a, a knife, an employee <laughs> that, that, um, a maintenance person at a sc- in the school district. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And so, th- and I believe they get, the same, same schedule, same similar schedules. Mm-hmm. I don't think they get it all of it off, but I think there's a point at which, you know, that you don't need to be doing maintenance if there's no necessarily yeah. kids around doing damage or, you know, maybe yard work <laughs> yeah. or some other things need to be happening. I don't know if they work year round, but I'm guessing that they did some time off, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, that would be, that would be a good job. Yeah. Do ma- <laughs> maintenance yeah. on at school or something, but uh-huh. in, and unless there's like, random cherry bombs thrown in the middle of the night. That'd be my concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway. So 
Yeah, we went to San Francisco and it was kind of funny because um, my parents had approached me Mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, so we're going to be going out of town on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And we were wondering if you could like take care of the yard and come over and water the plants and the bonsais and take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't. I'm going out of town on Sunday and Monday, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I was like, where are you guys going? They're like, we're going to San Francisco. I'm like, (laughs) we're going to San Francisco. (laughs) Uh Like, why do you, you know, they're like, well, we're taking my nephew, Grayson, you know, Uh my brother's son. They're like, yeah, we're taking Grayson to San Francisco. I'm like, I'm going with the assistant, mini assistant to San Francisco. <laughs> what hotel are you guys yeah, staying they're at? Yeah, like, where are you we're staying? staying at. No, it wasn't that. They, oh, okay. they got an Airbnb sort of over mm-hmm. by the airport area over okay. that way. And we were staying by, we got a hotel by Union Square. Gotcha. So we were in the like somewhat financial district area. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were in San Francisco and they're in like South San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was kind of funny. I'm like, well, we're going to go to the Exploratorium on Sunday. It's open from 12 to 4 if you want to join us there. And then it turned into like seeing if we were going to do dinner together and it did and we didn't work out. So we went separate ways, but then we met up on Sun or on Monday and mm-hmm. got to hang out. But yeah, so we went to the Exploratorium, let the kids run around crazy and the adults sort of just followed them and, you know, and walked. Mm-hmm. We walked. I don't I was like. I think the assistant tracked like 20,000 steps that day. Wow. Yeah. And I got my watch, either the assistant, which is probably more, which is probably likely she takes more steps than I do. Mm -hmm. Like we travel the same distance. Yeah. But she just takes more steps. Yes. And she's always about a third more steps than I am. (laughs) As long as it's consistent, that means her stride is 30% less of your stride. Yeah. One of these days, and I want to throw my watch on her as well Yeah, and just see how. You should just like mark some lines on the street and tell her that she needs to go walk from that line to that line. See what she says. (laughs) Yeah. Just be like, don't ask questions. Just go walk from that line to that line. But mine also tracks. Like if I do GPS tracking Mm -hmm. and track or like we go out for a run, mine's always mine's less mileage than hers gets. Oh, interesting. So your, your strides aren't calibrated properly. Maybe I don't don't know. I, Maybe whatever. (laughs) Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so we, on Sunday we went to the Exploratorium, which is a really cool place um, for those that aren't in the San Francisco area. I've never been there. What, what is there? It's a science museum. Is that kind of the best way I can sort of explain it? Mm -hmm. And it has all kinds of different avenues of science from electricity to light to, um, I don't know, all a whole bunch of different magnets. Do they have welding? Uh, uh, I don't didn't see anything in welding related, but they did have a differential. Really? And they were showing how gears work. That's kind of cool. There's all kind of section about <laughs> yeah. gearing. And they had like how to reduce gearing like T cases, uh-huh. you know. Um, and they had a lot of light light ones where you like you could. Did you like nerd out over that one? And you're like, I tried the assistant. Come here. Come here. This I, is really cool. You got to check to, this out. Come yeah, here. Show, <laughs> show the, the assistant and mini assistant. I'm like, look, this is a differential. And they're like, yeah. And they walked away. I'm like, but this is like the one you're thing like, no. in the museum that I could actually talk about. You don't understand. Come <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. And so they had like uh, crystals where you could like line. They oh, had another like a one beam, of your favorite things. A beam of light. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> A beam of light that hits the crystal and then it breaks it up into the different okay. uh, prism colors, okay. red, green, yeah. you know, and uh, yellow. Mm-hmm. And then you could turn it and it would hit another crystal and then it would focus again, you oh, know, and nice. you could kind of play That'd with cool. that. Yeah. They had a lot of things with mirrors, like mm-hmm. concave mirrors that and another mirror behind you. So you could play with. It was really bizarre. Like you'd play, it would look like you were closer to things than you were. And you like uh-huh. tried to grab them and it would mess with your perception. Okay. They had ones where, um, like they had a heat lamp and you, you could, f- it would focus the heat in a certain area, mm-hmm. you know, and you could feel it with your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they had a, a whole section on magnets and how magnets work. And, you know, they like, uh, different levels of strength of magnets and okay. and then they were showing like iron like they had a bunch of iron things like uh filings on a mm-hmm. surface and then you could stick the magnets up to it and would show the difference or the waves of the magnet mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and just a lot of really cool things and it was neat on many levels neat for the kids because they could just play it was all yeah. hands-on nice like the kids just run around and go to different areas <laughs> and play with things okay you know and then for the more adult you're just like Oh, 
oh, that I see it now. You know, yeah. like I get it. You know, okay. like we've all sort of seen the magnet with file shavings that, you know, kind of hit a magnet in different areas. Mm-hmm. But when you start moving the magnet around, you see it. The magnetic The field. magnetic fields yeah. moving around too. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really, it's really kind of cool, you know. That's neat. Yeah, and it was the whole place is that way. One thing that was really cool to me, and the assistant's like, yeah, I, I've done this in the classroom in science. <laughs> you know, and I didn't know it, but like, you know how like, I'm sure you've seen somebody hold like a hairdryer up and then put a ping pong ball yes. on it, right? Mm-hmm. And it can, and it floats. Mm-hmm. They had a bigger scale of that. They okay. had a big old blower with a cone on it. Okay. And so all the blower was focused and down it into the a cone nozzle. and it clearly it's a nozzle. And then yeah. they had a beach ball. Okay. Right. So it's the same, same process. Yeah. But what, but you could tilt the blower okay. or tilt the hairdryer uh-huh. like at a 45 degree and the ball will stay in the stream of in air. the stream. Mm-hmm. Even if it's at a 45 degree, yeah. it's, it doesn't fall. Uh-huh. The air will hold it up. It'll yeah. still stay in that. You know, I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> that's nuts. You yeah. know, and so we had the kids stand over in like the corner and then we lowered the ball over their head and they're like, yeah. How, why is it not falling on me? You know? Yeah. And so that's cool. yeah, it's just a really, really neat um, a museum, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they were closing a little early because they were doing a private event okay. that evening. But it, we were there three hours and it was it w- was enough time to get through the entire museum, but it wasn't really enough time to like do the entire museum. Somebody should be, should take that idea, that concept of the Exploratorium mm-hmm. and do one for adults on like <laughs> a vehicle. Okay. Or like a, uh, an EV and how does an EV work or a uh, different yeah. hybrid engine setups or an engine or motors in general or vehicle drivetrains or get into like a uh, RF radio dynamics. Yeah. They didn't really have like a whole bunch on electricity, right? Yeah. They did have it. one that was like somebody would hold on to one, a pole and then you, the other pole was sort of a ways away. Like you couldn't touch mm-hmm. both, but you two or three people mm-hmm. like my father and I were able to touch both of the poles and then music started playing out of a speaker. Oh, that's so cool. You're the conductor. You were the yeah. conductor, you know, that's it was cool. low enough voltage. You didn't even yeah. feel it. You know, did they have a Van Graaff generator? I have no idea what that is. Oh my God. So Van Der, you've, I know you've seen them. They okay. essentially generate electricity and electrical charges gather on a giant ball on the top of it. Oh, and the spikes and then it'll the, like a Tesla coil. I mean, a Tesla coil is just a, ginormous Van de Graaff generator. Yeah, no, um, but there, the concept is that you can put your hand on it oh, and, and then the electrical particles go to gather you. on you and your hair starts standing up yeah. and you can start shocking people if, around you. Yeah, if they did, I didn't see it. Okay, but they really didn't have a lot of electrical stuff. That's too bad. They did have lights, a few things with lights and being mm-hmm. able to change voltages and, you know, show that. And then they they had a lot of like these like the carousels, like where you could change figures Okay. And then spin the carousel uh, and it would change the motion uh-huh. and make like an old school movie like thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so it just was a really fun thing for the kids to do. Nice. Yeah. And so that's, that was pr- the primary focus of going there gotcha. was to go and ex- do the exploratorium and, mm-hmm. um, you know, let the mini assistant run around like a crazy person <laughs> and just have fun all over the place. <laughs> yeah in the museum. So then that evening, um, we went back to our hotel, checked in, uh, got we and we took bart in so we parked out nice. outside of the city mm-hmm. um like in lafayette area um which is even no, outside of oakland mm-hmm. you know it's still considered bay area but it's you know it was a 20 something minute train ride into mm-hmm. the into the city mm-hmm. and um our hotel was fairly close to one of the bart stations so nice. that worked out really well and then, um, and we were close to Chinatown. So that evening we walked to Chinatown and, uh, more or less watched Chinatown close. Uh-huh. But, um, when we were walking around, we went, found this weird anime kid toy store and we went into it and <laughs> bought some stickers and bought, uh, the mini assistant bought a stuffy a stuffed animal. Mm-hmm. And, um, there was practice chopsticks yeah. like these things with like, it had a, we bought the one that had a panda on bear okay. on the end. Like you put the chopstick in, into the feet of the panda bear yeah. and it's rubber. <laughs> yeah. And so you, it would always, it always wants to open, yep. but you had to force it to close. Yeah. And then we're like, well, let's go to sushi. <clears throat> okay. So we went out to sushi that night and she got to practice with her practice chopsticks. Nice. So yeah, it worked out pretty well. That's cool. I forgot to mention, I went to, um, one of my favorite meals 
ever is Shabu. What's that? It's a hot pot essentially. Oh, okay. So oh, um, we, I really wanted to go to a hot pot and say, Oh my God. Yeah. In San Fran, but we didn't. One of my favorite meals ever. So I love, you know, Shabu and I haven't been able to go to any Shabu places um, since the pandemic started. Okay. And so uh, the secretary took me out to Shabu for my birthday nice. and I was like, this is amazing. And then thanks to Tony, I uh-huh. had a bunch of soju. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's soju on the menu. Let's yeah. get one of those, one of those, one of those. So I have, a, I have a really fun hot pot story for mm-hmm. you. Some Not some other time because we're running long. Yeah. And from China. Okay. But um, so while we were, but anyway, so while we were at sushi, yes, um, I ordered sake. Okay. Uh-huh. And um, one of the times on a, um, a business trip, I went to Japan and I went sake tasting. Oh, oh, interesting. And um, so I have a very vague idea of what kind of sakes I like. And so I was looking at the sake. Menu. I didn't even realize there was multiple types of sake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, <laughs> gotcha. I didn't, what I one of the big things I learned in in Japan and the the like the tour guide uh, uh-huh. for the sake tasting place or the the guy that was giving us the sake tasting was like, don't like they serve the hot sake is all the crap sake oh. like heating it up. It gets rid like you don't <laughs> taste it, <laughs> you, don't taste it. Gotcha. you know, so if you want good sake, it's the cold versions, Gotcha. you know, and the, all the hot sake is just like the crap shit yeah. that they just want to get rid of. Interesting. And they make okay. it hot. That's good to yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, so what I found out when I was, well, let me back up. So while we were at uh, sushi, uh-huh. um, I was looking at the sake menu okay. and the lady came over and she was like, we're out of this one. We're out of this one. We're out of this one. I said, okay, cool. I want that one. She's like, you want that one? I was like, yeah, I want that one. Uh-huh. She's like, okay. Like, I'm like, <laughs> why, was, <laughs> why, why was that a big deal? <laughs> yeah. And she came over and she like presented it sort of like wine. She's like, this is the one you want. I was like, yeah. She's <sighs> like, she, she didn't necessarily say it, but it, I, I just took it as, white person never oh yeah. never gets this one <laughs> okay you know like <laughs> you know we were in china did you know what you were ordering I, yeah I knew. okay i knew gotcha. you know, what i ordered was their own they had one on the menu that is an unfiltered sake gotcha so it still has it it presents itself white because okay. sake is a, it's a clear typically isn't it? typically it's clear so what sake is is it's wine made from rice gotcha right okay. and so this one is unfiltered it's filtered enough that the chunks of rice aren't in it, okay. but it's not filtered to make it clear. It gotcha. still has the like rice looking okay. color to it. So, so she so, delivered and she's like, you sure you she, want? Yeah. This? Like I think is she was this? showing it to yeah. me because like, this isn't clear. Yeah. It's not what you're thinking it <laughs> is. Not, and like, I was like, no, that's exactly that's what, what I want. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> and it was the only one on the menu that was unfiltered and that's, and I okay. ordered it and the assistant's like, what is this? I'm like, it's sake, you yeah. know? And she's like, no, sake's clear. I'm yeah. Like, no, this is an unfiltered yeah. <laughs> sake. Okay. It's kind of a hazy IPA. Gotcha. Right. Okay. And she's like, okay. And she tasted it and she's like, oh my gosh, this is out. This is the best sake I've ever had in my life. Interesting. And it okay. just adds, it's in a way, and I, what I kind of say it or describe it to her is like, the rice is still there, so it adds more flavor. It, there's okay. more flavor presented. I was say there, there's more of a flavor profile overall. It's more yeah. of a it's dynamic not, profile. Yeah, it's yeah. not such an alcohol. It's mm-hmm. more of a like it's a flavor. Gotcha. Thing. Okay. I don't know how to like you know it's like <laughs> pulpy um, orange juice versus regular clear flavor. like okay. really pulled out clear mm-hmm. orange juice from. Uh, you know, McDonald's, yeah. Okay. you know, it's like the, the fresh squeeze stuff has a lot more flavor than the Could it be attributed thing. to sort of like a nitro versus um, CO2 beer. Or, um, I would say it's probably more like an IPA versus a hazy IPA. Okay. Right. The Fair. hazy IPA isn't necessarily as hoppy to me. It yeah. doesn't seem as hoppy no, yeah. as an IPA is because mm-hmm. there's more flavors in yeah. there that are kind of muting or covering the hoppiness. The okay. You know, and there's that's, fair. that's more of a broad flavor profile in the hazy IPA than I feel is uh, just a standard IPA. Yeah, gotcha. So, um, yeah, and so the assistant was like, I've never tasted anything like this. I absolutely love it. This is the best sake I've had in my life. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I'm glad I could teach you something. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we went. So on the way back to the room. Mean, meanwhile, the the mini assistant is just shoving avo Q rolls in her uh, mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> she freaking no, loves say. these. Like they're just avocado and cucumber rolls, oh. and she just like we order like five rolls for her, and she's just like <laughs> rah, 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 just devouring them. I was gonna say the waitress, on the other hand, is like, God dang it! Now it's gonna be more white people ordering my <laughs> unfiltered sake. Which I she was get. like, this was the last one, <laughs> and I wanted uh, it, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> or something. Yeah. So Anyways. after dinner, we went out. We I found a, an ice cream place that was around the corner um, from our hotel. And they did a really interesting thing. It's kind of like Cold Stones okay. where they make the ice cream and then mm-hmm. put the items that you order into the ice cream. Mm-hmm. But this was like a cold plate, which mm-hmm. Cold Stones is like a cold piece of rock, mm-hmm. marble or something. Mm-hmm. This had a cold plate and they literally poured the cream, the cream on, it, yeah. on it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then they and I ordered the um, purple rain uh-huh. um, and it was blackberries, blueberries and honey. <laughs> okay. And so they put blackberries, blueberries uh, down, chopped them all up onto the creams, turned it a bunch of times, and then f- and then they lay it super flat. They yep. like spread it super flat yeah, so out. So it all freezes. So it all freezes, and then they drizzled honey on it, and then they scraped it, and it rolls uh-huh. up into these small like burrito looking things. Yep. And then they shoved all the burritos into the cup, and then put a little bit more fruit on top, yep. some whipping cream. And then that's what we ate. And then you eat those with chopsticks and you the could, little burritos. You yeah. could. We didn't. Yeah. We had we uh, ate them with our spoons. <laughs> yeah, those are super cool. If you, mm-hmm. anybody gets a chance to go to a place that does that, yeah, um, it's really it's a really neat uh, ice cream experience. It's a different guess, yeah. method. Yeah, and so yeah. both of the assistant and mini assistant never seen that done. Yeah. Okay. And so they're like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool." <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Is this only in San Francisco?" I'm like, no, no, yeah, <laughs> like, it's all no, over the place. This isn't <laughs> just China, Chinatown, San Francisco thing. Yeah. And so yeah, so we did that, and then on the way back to the hotel we went to a walgreens we bought a few bottles of water for the next day and we bought a bottle of wine Mm. to drink that evening but we didn't have a bottle opener because we were packed so light so (laughs) Uh, we were like what is the best screw top bottle that we can find uh, gotcha (laughs) i was thinking you were just going to shove the cork down into the bottle yeah with our chopsticks uh, (laughs) uh no we just bought a screw top and Mm -hmm. we and we only had one room so we put the mini assistant to bed when we got back and then all the lights were off and the assistant and I were sitting there just wasting some time on our phones and mm-hmm. talking and drinking, drinking wine, wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gotcha. in the dark. <laughs> okay. So what so, about Monday? Yeah. So Monday came around. Um, we woke up early ish. I mean, uh, in the city is loud and mm-hmm. we're just not kind of used to that. And, uh, so I called my parents. I'm like, where are you at? And they're like, yeah, there's no power at our house. We kind of just woke <laughs> up. We don't like, we're not even close to getting ready, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm like, okay, well, why don't we meet at Ghirardelli Square and have lunch? And that was like okay. three hours from then. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, okay. And so we uh, went, the mini assistant and the assistant wanted to go shopping and yeah. they wanted to see the malls. Yeah. And I said, okay, see you later. You're like, I'm going to go check out that differential back at the Exploratory. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, I'm going to go to a coffee shop and sit down for a little bit uh-huh. and just, you know, do a little work because it's Monday. Yeah. Check on emails. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all um, you're not on spring break. No, oh. I said, and then we, they wanted to go to Macy's <laughs> really. She wanted to show a f- eight story tall Macy's Jesus is Christ, right on union square. And so they, uh, they're like, I'm going to show her Macy's the mini mm-hmm. assistant Macy's. And then we're going to go to the Lego store, um, down at another, that's park. worth it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Lego. Okay, stores come on. Are, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I said, okay, I'm going to be here at this coffee shop, like across the street from the Macy's when you guys are done there, come and get me. And so that happened. We went down to the Lego store, uh, bought some mini figures, mm-hmm. um, and looked around and saw some really cool Legos, but we didn't, we were packing so light that we we're trying not to buy anything also. Gotcha. Right. Cause all we had is the backpacks on our back mm-hmm. and they were pretty much full with clothes and jackets and stuff. Mm. Um, but it would rain that morning. So our jackets are on. So the, our bags were empty. So the mini assistants are like, we got room in our bags now. I'm like, you might not want to wear your coat all day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So then we went to jump on, jump on the cable car, mm-hmm. not a trolley. Don't mm-hmm. ever call it a trolley. Don't call it a trolley. No, it's not no. a trolley. It's a cable car. Okay. What's yeah. the difference between a trolley and a cable car? I think a trolley is kind of more of a train or maybe the electrical signals kind from the like overhead where the cable car is uh, literally the cable running through the ground that the 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 me- mechanism grabs onto the cable and it moves. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Yeah, because I made the mistake. <laughs> and I went and asked because we were waiting for the cable car. While uh, we were waiting for the cable car, my family actually showed up 
uh-huh. to jump onto the cable car and we were already in line and they're like, Oh my gosh, there they are. They're like halfway through the line. Let's mm-hmm. go sit with or hang out with them. When we got to the front, like two cars came by and they weren't going to where we wanted to go. Okay. So I went over to ask like the conductor guy. I'm like, Hey, when, which trolley is going to Ghirardelli square? And then he's like, these it's are cable- not a fucking trolley, <laughs> yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. These are, these are cable cars. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what cable cars? is? Oh, they're cable cars. They're not trolleys. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, what tr- cable car is getting? He's like trying to explain to me the difference. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you are paranoid about this. Yeah. It does, I'm trying to figure out how to get to my destination. Yeah. And it was, it was like the next one. And At I'm that like, point, fine. I would have been like, okay, I'm sorry. Which de- which bus goes to the next destination? <laughs> right. Which of these airplanes? <laughs> yeah, to start calling it random stuff. <laughs> Uh, so we jumped on that mm-hmm. rode it across town which mm-hmm. it's kind of neat to be on a cable car because there's just not a lot of them around trolley yeah <laughs> the, the mode of transportation yes. is not common yeah over here yeah. um and i don't it might be the i don't know if la has any of them i mean it might be the only one in california oh uh, yeah so we rode those over to ghirardelli square um on the way to gear like where the trolley cable car the ca- airplane <laughs> bus drops you off <laughs> yeah um to Ghirardelli square which is this it is Ghirardelli chocolate yeah, okay you know if you're anybody was like gotcha. wait there's i know that name so Ghirardelli chocolate has they have their like own, own square gotcha um you pass by this uh irish pub called the buena vista club yum and they're famous for irish whiskeys oh nice or irish coffees excuse oh. me okay irish coffee which, and is that essentially just coffee with whiskey in it? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. <laughs> and so we went in and we were like, Hey, we just want two Irish coffees, please. Mm-hmm. And, and I have a video of it. I could show you, but they literally just, they pour hot water in the cup. Then they empty the cup. Then they pour hot coffee in the cup. So it doesn't lower the temperature of the coffee. Okay. Gotcha. And then he took a spoon and, and he does it so quick that some of them are high and some of them are low. And then he literally takes a spoon and like, shoves coffee from one cup to another cup to make them all sort of the same height. <laughs> no disregard to like losing coffee. Cause if we saw the guy, he was, I was fairly, like, how do you do that? He- fairly low and he was doing it on the, the tray, right? Okay. So like he's just throwing coffee everywhere when the, the coffee pot was low. He just like dumped it out and like went like called for the buster to get another, <laughs> okay. pot, you know, and then he, so about halfway up of this like eight ounce cup of coffee and then about three quarters of the way, um, to the top, he poured Irish, uh, Tillamon Dew Irish whiskey into it. Yeah, oh, nice. so now you have like an eighth of the cup kind of showing. Okay. And then they filled it with a uh, cold, uh, heavy cream uh, over the top. Yum. And so the coffee's super hot, <laughs> but the cream is super cold. So uh-huh. you're drinking it and it's mixing and it tastes interesting. Sweet. Okay. So yeah, so we, we told my parents to like, Hey, you guys go ahead. Uh-huh. We're going to go get an Irish coffee and mm-hmm. we'll meet you at Ghirardelli square. So we ate lunch at Dilla, G- Ghirardelli square. Then we went into Ghirardelli chocolate place and we had some of their ice cream. We had uh, floats more like, or a fudge floats kind of scenario there. Mm-hmm. And I had a, a espresso over um, vanilla ice cream there. It's super good. Mm-hmm. An amaretto or an, an affogato. Okay. Affogados are good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we went to, then we split my parents and my nephew went a different direction and the, my family went to pier 39. Nice. Yeah. And we uh, just did shopping, walked down the way mm-hmm. and I went to Weeby knives. Hey, hey, Derek, Derek. And I bought this. Oh, what is that? This is the knife I purchased. Oh, no shit. After talking to Derek for a while <laughs> online and didn't actually get to meet Derek. Uh-huh. Um, met one of his he employees. He wasn't there. No, oh, bummer. He's, he's only there on Sunday, Tuesdays, Sun Saturdays and Tuesdays, Sundays and Tuesdays. Okay. He's only there two days. Gotcha. So, yeah. But this is sort of a K bar, okay. K bar military style esque knife. That's a Gerber. Okay, but it's not. I mean, it's it's different. Is the yeah. But from comparing the two, you can see I just I wanted a not as tall blade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But at the length is pretty much the same. It's yeah. just not as tall. So that's nice. I like the the handle on this one better. Yeah, um, me too. That's still thick. That's oh, yeah. that's interesting how the the it comes to a point at the end too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the neat. back of that one it comes to a point for like breaking glass or anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but that handle's nice. I like the way that the thumb 
fits mm-hmm. on it and everything. And yeah, so it kind of flares up so you can, mm-hmm. so it kind of has like a, a protection from your hand sliding forward onto the blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I talked to Ryan over at Bandit, Bandit Concealment and said, uh-huh. hey, I picked up a knife. I need, uh, I'm going to need to get a sheath. And he's like, oh, which one did you get? And I said, oh, it's this Gerber. He's like, oh, I got one of those. I'll just make it off the sheath <laughs> off of my knife and then just nice. get it to you. Perfect. Said, Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> I don't even need to give my knife up. Nice. So that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I was going to ask if you needed it because I might be seeing Ryan uh, soon here. Nope. Um, he should supposedly have one. So yeah, cool. So yeah. And then, um, pretty much after that, we just headed back home, um, all the way and nice through the cable car back over to Bart under the, under the bay over to, you know, Antioch and yeah, drove all the way home. That's cool. So it was a good, a good little weekend. Um, truck stuff I did is I changed the oil on Bobcat and Clifford. Gotcha. Um, and started doing the fluids on there. I also ordered a bunch of stuff uh, for brakes uh, from Marlin Crawler because mm-hmm. I went and looked at Trail Gear's website and looked at Sh- Marlin Crawler's website. And th- for two rotors and two calipers from Trail Gear was pretty much the same as two rotors, two calipers, extended brake lines, and wheel bearing, two wheel bearing <laughs> kits from Marlin Crawler. So wow. I was like, well, I'll just get this stuff, all this stuff from Marlin Crawler. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking at doing upgrades to Tundra stuff, but I kind of was, um, I don't think it necessarily, if I if get the brakes working, I think it'll be fine. I don't think I mm-hmm. absolutely need that. Plus I'm going to do it on Samantha. So, I kind of was like, well, I'll just leave this all the same. I'll just kind of get it back to where it was or how it should be and Mm -hmm. um, spend my money in other places. There you go. So nice. Um, Yeah, that should be good, man. Uh, Speaking of Ryan, I'm going to go back to Ryan real quick. Bandit concealment. So, uh, you know, I was uh, I told him originally when I had gotten when I picked up my XD, I was like, hey, look what I got. I need a holster made. Um, he, we were like, Oh yeah, no, I have got, I'm in no hurry to do it. You know, I'm not, you know, whenever take your time, um, come by, pick it up at the warehouse and I'll pick it up some other time, whatever. Um, after, after that all was going down, I was like, I need a holster stat (laughs) (laughs) carrying this around in my waistband sucks. Yeah. (laughs) And so, um, I went over to his place like that night (laughs) <laughs> on Sunday night? Sunday night. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Went over to his place and he made a, a couple of holsters for me. Oh, cool. Um, so I just, I love the work he does. Um, and, uh, they came out really good. So you got to see one of them here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, it looks, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's super clean. Mm-hmm. I like the way that it, it kind of contours to some of the, um, features of the yeah. gun mm-hmm. and it's a nice snug, tight fit. It I mean, is. You have to like, really pull that out of there, which I think is great because it's not going to wa- fall, fall out when you're wandering around. Exactly. You know, so. it's going to stay in that holster. So, um, yeah, uh, I just, it was a, another little funny thing that he was laughing about. <laughs> so definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Uh, sounds like we had a very eventful and adventurous weekend. Yeah. Um, we have coming up here this weekend is the listener meetup. Yes, it is. So make sure everybody makes it out to high water brewing in Lodi, California. Um, we actually just got off the phone with them, uh, right before recording, sitting down recording here. And, um, they have a new product out that I'm really excited about. Yes, they do. (laughs) So they, when we were there with, uh, Steve and Tyler with power tank, uh, we're doing our recording and then shutting down the place. Um, they, we learned about uh, campfire stout on nitro turns out they have now started putting that in cans. Oh yeah. So uh, Jimmy asked her how many pallets she had available for a Saturday. <laughs> I'm excited yeah. for it. Yeah. I'm also, I, I loved their campfire coffee. I still haven't had mine. Oh, it was good. Oh, I need to have that. Yeah. I just realized I've not had that yet. Um, it's very tasty. Okay. Yeah. I need to have that. Maybe I'll, I'll, that's get... a, one of those morning coffee. Is it a beverages. good morning drink? Yeah. Is it more say, coffee it more, than it's beer? A, or? No, it's a really good balance. Okay. It's a really good balance. It's definitely a camping coffee, like uh, mid morning so scenario. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't, 
Depends on Would your it, weekend, uh, right? Okay, fair. <laughs> I just see it, you know, I took it out camping. So yeah. it was one of those like, hey, we're going to be, we're going to be day drinking. Mm-hmm. We're going to be having a good time. And I'm going to, you know, it's like 10 o'clock. I'm going to pop my campfire coffee. Yeah. And the, after I've had my normal coffee, okay, you know, and cruise into the, the day having a good drink. Nice. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I need to drink mine. Um, but yeah, this Saturday, high water brewing, we're expecting quite a few people showing up. Um, we are buying the first 10 pizzas. So, uh, they will be popping out at five 30 PM. Uh, so if you want some of the pizzas, then, uh, you can show up and get some of that early. Um, if you don't get one of the first 10, then you can get your own pizzas. Yep. <laughs> so, Cool, man. I think that about does it for this episode. It's a long one. Uh, some really fun stories yeah, from this episode. Crazy so. story. <laughs> uh, I hope I just never have to go through that again. It would be my hope. Uh, once in a lifetime is good for me. Um, and uh, yeah, if anybody wants to give any feedback, uh, you can definitely do that. Give us a call. 916-345-4744. If you want to see the security camera footage, you can go check out my Instagram account. I put up there as a permanent post um, over at 4X4 Toyota Tyler. And then Jimmy's got uh, stuff going on all the time over on the Snail Trail 4x4 Instagram, um, telling about the different stuff going on that we have with the podcast, with the YouTube, with interviews, with uh, hanging out over at Weeby Knives, um, lots of good stuff. So check those two channels out. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can always email us too, if you guys want to really want to, but also know. some fun minor discussions going on on every single episode over on yeah. high rate four by four. Yep. There's some fun discussions for sure. So check those out as well. Make an account over on I rate four by four and say hi to us over on our, our fun little private channel, our private forum, not really public forum, but then we also have the private we one. If you want to, if you want to spend some money and, uh, get in on those conversations. So, All right, man. So with that said, do you have any final words for everybody? I just am envisioning you loading your gun (laughs) while somebody is asleep in your, (laughs) in your freaking garage. That's all. Yeah. So now we're, uh, we're changing how the gun is getting stored at home now. So (laughs) because of that situation (laughs) and with that, my friends keep crawling. I got one for you. Joke time. Joke time. Hey, everybody. Everybody. Did you know it was joke time? Joke time with Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> what did the middle schooler say to the high schooler? Um, hello up there. Nothing. They no. texted. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>